These mighty structures stand where 50 years ago were clustered teepees of the Omaha Indians. It's set in 1898 and 1899 in Omaha, mostly Nebraska. And um, at that time, that summer, the city had, uh, it hosted um, the Trans-Mississippi and International Exposition, which was kind of the city's shot at hosting a World's Fair. Uh, what they called the White City, which was, it was just, they were just temporary structures, but they looked like marble and stone and, and kind of classical design and then it had a long lagoon down the middle of it. And then across the bridge was what they called the Midway, which were carnival rides and, and exhibitions. And, and one of the, but one of the Midway, Midway exhibits was the Wild West Show, which um, kind of embraced the, um, the stereotypes and the, and the popular conception of the American West and, portray, and, it, and its portrayal of cowboys and Indians and the, um, and the battles that they portrayed and all of that. And so, so there you have this kind of, um, as I was saying, kind of a stereotypical and um, popular representation of, of, of the West and how it was won. And then you have the true story of, of, of people um, just kind of living their lives and trying to uh, um, preserve their culture a little bit further down the midway. The exposition hosted, uh, and this was always part of, of their plan, was to host what they called the Indian Congress, which was a kind of, uh, at, was at various purposes, basically. And on the one hand, it was going to be basically a live human exhibit, a kind of uh, anthropological exhibit uh, that was just north of, of the Midway. And so the idea was fairgoers could come and see um, Native Americans uh, living the way that they lived. And the idea was that it was um, a glimpse of, of a vanishing way of life. The Purpose of the Indian Congress. essentially going to live in this camp, and um, the fairgoers could walk among them and, and uh, view their traditions and their rituals, and, um, and then it, it was also an opportunity for representatives of various tribes to get together and to, um, to kind of make connections with, with the city's uh, founders and, and, and leaders and um, and kind of bridge what had been um, a, a very um, treacherous kind of uh, cultural gap, you know. The leaders of the Indian Congress gathered together representatives of the various Native American tribes and encouraged them to bring along with them their traditions and their um, and, and, and to exhibit their their ways of life and also to pose for photographs. And they they did sit for the photographs and um, and like I said that's a great uh, that, that, that's a great archival trove that, that we have of these cultures that were kind of they really were kind of not so much vanishing as being vanished you know um, how were the Indians portrayed silence of this place was disturbed only by the Indian war sound by the revelry of the Indian dance and the prairies rang with no sound but the war whoop of the aborigine. I, mean, I guess I didn't realize how much the exposition itself was being defined in the way that it was as some kind of celebration or victory of, of white people over Native Americans. That misrepresentation became the representation for many Americans after that. You know, the 2.7 million people who came to the fair did not come to basically dance on the graves of Native Americans, you know. They... Who contributed to these representations of Indians? Newspaper articles of the day, the Omaha Bee was um, notoriously racist, and they would, and their portrayal of different cultures in a city was often brutal, and, and in some cases even um, sort of fueled flames of, of conflict and, um, and contributed to misunderstanding and misrepresentation. And 
those representations that I was just speaking of, I think they had far-reaching consequences and effects, and so that that was, um, I mean, that representation was so rigorous that that's what Americans heard and, and came to understand that mystery.